Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a brand new edition of Shane's World, the weekly show where we break down the five biggest news stories in the world of geek culture. This week we do have a new segment we're going to be introducing, so stay tuned for that. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel for even more content. We have an Avatar Way of Water review dropping later on today, but let's dive in to these new stories. Up first, we're going to be talking about Ash Ketchum leaving Pokemon. That's right, you heard that right, Ash Ketchum the protagonist of Pokemon since the beginning will no longer be the protagonist starting next year. He's going to have one final episode. I think it's like a special. I think it's like an hour long where we'll say goodbye to like him and his team of Pokemon, Pikachu, Charizard, and uh, the likes. And then a few months later, we'll be introduced to two new characters. That's right. We're not going to be just following Ash, one person anymore. We're going to be following a boy and a girl as they go on a fresh new Pokemon journey, starting with the new generation of Pokemon that were just introduced in the new games. While I hate to see it, because, like, of course, I love Ash Ketchum. I'm a 90s kid. Love Ash. You know, he's iconic. He's one of the most iconic characters in pop culture. But if you look at it this way, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! has had several protagonist switches. I think they're on, like, number six at this point. Well, Ash has always been there for Pokemon. So I think it might be an, I think it might be time to switch things up. And I don't think Ash is just going to be gone completely. You know, he's the top trainer in the world now. So... I assume, similar to how, like, Ash was watching the best trainer in the world on his TV and stuff, and we saw him on newscast, and we saw him at tournaments once in a while, I think we'll do the same thing with these new characters. Like, they'll see Ash from time to time, whether it's on TV or at a tournament or doing something, Ash will still be there. He'll still be in the universe. He just won't be the character we're following anymore. So I think it's cool. I'm all right with the change-up, and uh, I think some people are going to have some complaints, but I think it is time. Up next, we're talking about Jason Momoa, but not Aquaman, not Lobo. He is going to be starring with John Cena, his fellow DC guy and Peacemaker, in a new film called Killer Vacation. It's being described as an action comedy. This sounds right up my alley, because I've, I've been really missing a good comedy. The last good comedy I watched was... I don't even know, but you know what was an underrated comedy? Vacation Friends with John Cena last year. So I'm hoping this might be in the same kind of vein as that, maybe mixed in with like the 21 Jump Street type of feel. I'm excited for this. I think it's curious that Momo is just working with all the old wrestlers. Like he's doing this with Cena. He's got that buddy cop movie coming out with Batista. Now he just needs to like play the villain in Hobbs and Shaw 2 or something and he'll get the trifecta of Batista, Cena, and The Rock. I'm excited for this film. I think it could be good but it also could be like eh. vacation friends went straight to hulu and it was a blast so maybe this one will have a very similar feel but nonetheless i am excited for that i'm curious to see where it lands speaking of uh you know lower scale movies ballerina which is the upcoming john wick spinoff film has found its villain and that is norman reedus from the walking dead and boondock saints now i've been waiting for announcement of uh, Norman Reedus as Ghost Rider in the MCU. So when I first saw Norman Reedus' name, I was like, ooh, and this instead. But I'm still very excited. I'm looking forward to this movie. It's definitely not just like a standalone spinoff. Like Keanu Reeves is going to be in this. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne, Ian McShane, they're all showing up in this. And now Norman Reedus is the villain. Can't wait to see Anna de Armas kick Norman Reedus' ass. I think that's going to be hilarious. I love Norman Reedus. Hopefully... I love him in The Walking Dead. I'm looking forward to his spinoff, but hopefully this kind of propels him out of that, and so maybe he can be Ghost Rider. Maybe he can do some other things, and people won't just look at him as Daryl Dixon, but makes me even more excited for the John Wick uh, spinoff film. Speaking of spinoff films, we all know Sony makes excellent Spider-Man spinoffs with the Venom movies, Morbius, best movie of the year. They've got Madame Web coming, Craven, uh, El Moretto with Bad Bunny, which is going to be so dang good. Now they've announced another one, and I'm so conflicted because they have announced Hypno Hustler, starring Donald Glover, and he's also producing, and I think writing some of it, maybe co-writing. I don't know how to feel about this, because over here, I've never even heard of Hypno Hustler, and I think it's going to be a stupid idea for a movie, but on this other side... It's Donald Glover, one of the best creative minds in the industry today. So it's like, I don't know. Like, I'm excited for it, but I kind of hate that I'm excited for it. And I'm definitely going to see it. I bet the soundtrack is going to be dope because you know he's going to have a hand in the soundtrack. What does this mean for the 
future Miles Morales that we assume is coming into the MCU at some point, because Donald Glover played uh, his uncle, who's actually Prowler in the comic books, in Spider-Man Homecoming. So what does that mean? Is he going to play both? Is he just not going to come back when they eventually do Miles Morales? Very interested to see how this fits in. I will say I'm more excited for this than El Moretto. Not that that's saying much, but that's how I feel about this announcement. Up next, we're going to dive into that new segment I talked about. Instead of having the trailers take up different stories of the show because I only have five slots we're going to have a kind of a sixth slot now but it's going to be three trailers I want to talk about and I know the Oppenheimer trailer dropped last night but maybe I'll talk about that next week because I already had the trailers picked that I want to talk about and that first one is the new Scream trailer if you're a longtime fan of the channel you'll know I love Scream Scream's my favorite film of all time uh very inspired by it it's the movie that made me want to make movies want to write and I love it. I love the whole franchise. Some of them are a little better than others, but I really like this, uh, you know, reboot kind of last year or this year, I guess it still hasn't even been a year. And now we have a new follow up coming with that same cast minus Nev Campbell. Maybe I still don't quite believe them that she's not going to show up at the end, but we got a little teaser for it. It's it's not a whole lot. We just see the new cast, uh, you know, on a subway in New York. And there's a lot of people with ghost face masks. And then one of them looks a little more menacing than the rest. And then it ends with him, like, choking out one of uh, Randy Meeks' niece. So not a whole lot in this trailer, but enough to get you excited. Enough to show you that we are moving to New York City, that you're going to get the vibe. We'll probably get, a, like, a actual trailer in January. Right, ghost face? No? All right, fine. Just prove me wrong right here on my own show. But this trailer definitely did enough for me to get very excited. Definitely one of my most anticipated films of the year. I love the Ready or Not guys and Jenna Ortega. Come on, you can't go wrong with Jenna Ortega. The next trailer up is Barbie. Barbie trailer is wacky as shit. I did not expect that when I saw it. It kind of recreates 2001 A Space Odyssey. It looks so weird. It looks so wacky. And the cast is incredible. It's the, from a great director in Greta Gerwig. I'm very excited for this movie. Not something I thought I'd ever say about a Barbie movie, but I am. Can't wait to see Margot Robbie this week in Babylon and uh, to see this trailer again on the big screen. This movie could be terrible, but I got a good feeling about it, actually. The next trailer we're going to talk about, speaking of Spider-Man, is Across the Spider-Verse. This trailer blew my socks off, blew my pants off. I was butt-ass naked after watching this trailer because it blew my clothes right off of my body. It looked so good. Uh, Miguel O'Hara, Oscar Isaac looks awesome in this. Uh, the, you know, the voiceover from Miles' mom was very emotional we get to see all kinds of different spider-man in this trailer you see the playstation 1 video game spider-man you see the ps4 video game spider-man you see ultimate spider-man you see the bag on the head spider-man several other spider-mans we get to see uh spider woman for the first time in this trailer uh, it looks like spider gwen and uh, miles are kind of going to be on the run from all the other spider man so i wonder if that includes like are we going to see old friends like noir spider ham and those guys come back to maybe help them are they going to be attacking miles as well very interested in this movie it honestly might be my most anticipated movie for next year right above scream but that's trailer park that's the uh, new segment we're going to break down three trailers it might not always be three you know if there's only like two cool trailers that week we'll talk about two but whatever nonetheless that way we can talk about some stuff without clogging up the show with all these cool trailers that drop now the last story the big main event it's the story that everyone's been talking about the last few days and that is that henry cavill is no longer superman it sucks it sucks that he's no longer superman but honestly from a business standpoint i get it i understand it james gunn and peter saffron want to start from scratch and want to just kind of reboot everything i understand i get it but man as a fan i'm so bummed to black adam just giving us blue balls now giving us superman for like five seconds because apparently his cameo is not even going to be in the flash anymore but man I love Henry Cavill, and I was, as soon as this announcement happened, I was like, well, maybe he can at least come back to The Witcher. That's not happening either. Also sucks, because Liam Hemsworth, C Ghostface, you'd make a better uh, Witcher than Liam Hemsworth, right? Yes. Yes, he would. 
But nonetheless, Henry Cavill's gonna be okay. He's gonna star in and produce a Warhammer 40k universe over at Amazon, which he's a huge fan of, possibly even more than Superman and The Witcher. And that project is honestly probably what, what he left The Witcher for more than Superman, but it still stinks. We're gonna definitely get to see Henry Cavill and some cool nerdy stuff, but no Superman, at least anytime soon. I'm curious, who do you think they could cast as this younger Superman they want to see? Are you mad? Are you one of those children on Twitter and Facebook saying you're not watching any more goddamn DC movies until you get your Henry Cavill daddy back as Superman? Are you one of those guys? Or are you like me where you're like, really sucks, definitely wish we could have at least gotten one more solo film, but I get it, I understand that's kind of where I'm coming from. It sucks, but I understand. Hopefully, you guys feel the same way. Let's chat about all these new stories and trailers down in the comments below. Did you like the new segment? Do you wish we should keep it? Do you want to see more segments added to the show? I've got one in mind, but we'll wait a few weeks to maybe introduce that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so we can keep growing towards 250. Make sure you share the video so we can keep growing in this wacky world of the YouTube algorithm. And stay tuned for an Avatar Way of Water review later on today. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys right here next time.